Another sun worshipped the stars. Those vaster stars who ruled the night were black is bright and all unselfish work is right. And greed is sin and Africa lives on Pan-Africa. These are the words of one of Africa's greatest sons, William Edward Bugat Dubois. Welcome to the first in our series on Pan-Africanism. Today, we unveil W.E.B. Dubois, the father of Pan-Africanism. Yes, Antoine. Rosa Parks, Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, George Padmore, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Wole Soyinka, Julius Nyerere. The roll call is endless. People who believed and believe in the African. Indeed, that all the peoples of the world are equal and that an African can stand as tall as anybody. Of all these greats, none stood taller than William Edward Bogart Dubois. Recognized variously as a historian, socialist, civil rights leader, peace advocate, writer, editor, and ultimately as a shaper of people and ideas, Dubois devoted his intellect, long life, and energies to seeking out, providing knowledge about Africa and African people. He also vigorously challenged and exposed the myths and distortions about the African situation. He left a great intellectual legacy. We are in Du Bois' personal library. Uh, he wrote 21 books. His favorite of them the Source of Black Folks, published in 1903. You have Black Reconstruction in America, published in 1860 to 1880. Uh, and we have also uh, essays, about 200 essays he wrote. We have poems, magazine, we have Liveless. So these are the books that he wrote himself. And we have this. He was a director of Negro history in Atlanta University for 14 years. So he needed information to be able to carry out his uh, duties. So these are information on African Americans. Dubois's impact was not only felt in books, but also on the field. He was the most prominent political activist of his generation of black intellectuals. Most importantly, he was the principal architect of the Pan-African Congress, which played a crucial role in the African independence movement. Such was his belief in the strength of the African. Again, he toured the world extensively and met with important opinion leaders. His mission was clear, to educate the African and non-Africans alike about the greatness of the African. Dr. Du Bois was in China in 1959. And that was his birthday. He was in China in February, and he was born in 1868, 23rd February. So in order to celebrate his birthday, uh, the Chinese government intended to give him an award. And this is an award to him from the China government. And they wanted to make a vaccine out of Du Bois. If you look at the picture and the real picture on the wall, just look alike. To them, Du Bois, the personality is Du Bois, uh, the dragon in his hand is a symbol of leadership. And we have apple also in his hand as a symbol of wisdom. And we have a deer, it's a symbol of peace, the peace that Du Bois pursued throughout his lifetime. And we have a scroll, and that is knowledge, so his level of knowledge. And this was given to him on his 91st birthday, uh, to him and the wife Shelley Graham from uh, 1959. 
Born on February 23, 1868, in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, Dubois traces his roots from Africa through Trinidad in the West Indies. His association with Ghana began when he met his protege, Kwame Nkrumah, in London. He was instrumental in Nkrumah's relocation to Ghana to lead the liberation movement. This man, Kwame Nkrumah, met in the, in the United States and uh, through Dubois, Kwame Nkrumah, actually his life was sort of reshaped or his direction was changed. His political direction was changed became the Pan-Africanist that he, we know him to be. In 1961, at age 93, Dubois moved his residence to Ghana at the invitation of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah to become the founding director of the Encyclopedia Africana project. He worked on this project till his death in 1963. Dubois was invited to Ghana in 1961 to be the founding director of Africana Encyclopedia. So he needed information on Africa, so he made collection of all African countries. He was able to draw a plan for the whole project. He was old, but the brain was still active, so he spent two years in Ghana, from 1961 to 1963. He didn't finish with the project, but when he died, part of the project has been completed. So we have a copy, that's a Encyclopedia African Dictionary that has been brought to add to Du Bois's collection. So we could say that Du Bois has an encyclopedia as part of his collection of books. The building, which Du Bois used as a residence between 1961 and 1963, is today a national monument. In 1985, the idea came that this place where he lived should become the permanent resting place and the place where we become the maker of all Africans, both in the diaspora and on continental Africa, to become their home this place was this, uh, this became was redesigned as a tomb, and so the mortar remains were taken from the castle and reburied here. And since then, the the center has become a tourism destination, especially for people. Today, the remains of William and his wife Shirley lie in this tomb, which used to be a gazebo, and at whose shade they entertained their guests. Herein lies a great son of Africa. Hey, the Golden Coast, Coast so-called by Europeans, European. on account of its abandoned band and copious yield of gold things Thanks. and treasures of nature, is also of successful mind.